Hello, brilliant humans, and welcome back to Las Vegas, Nevada, where we are live from the AWS reInvent show floor here with theCUBE. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined with Dave Vellante, and we have a very exciting conversation with you. Two, two companies you may have heard of. We've got AWS and Red Hat in the house. Manu and Joel, thank you so much for being here. Love this little fist bump to start it off. That's right. Before we even got rolling, Manu, you said that you wanted this to be the best segment of, of the Cube's airing. We're doing over 100 segments, so you're going to have to bring the heat. Are we, uh, we're ready. We're, ready. we're yep. ready. Let's bring it on. We're ready. All right. Ready. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. Go. Dave's ready. Let's do, it. Let's do it. How's the show going for you guys real quick before we dig in? Yeah. I think after COVID, it's really nice to see that we're back into the 2019 level. And you know, people just want to yes. get out, meet people, have that human touch with each other. And I think a lot of trust gets built as a function of that. So it's super amazing to see our partners and our customers here at ReInvent. Yeah. And yeah. you've got a few in the house. Just, That's just, true. Just, just a few, <laughs> maybe, maybe a, very, a couple. Yeah. Very few shows can say that, by the way. Yeah. There's maybe a handful. I think one of yeah. the things we were saying, it's almost like the entire Silicon Valley yeah. has descended <laughs> in the Expo Hall area. So, yeah. And there's a, for a few different reasons. There's a few different so broadly defined. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how's the show going for you so far? It's 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 Isn't amazing. Awesome. It's the tenth year, right? It's uh, yeah, every, decade. I think I've been to five, and it's it grows every single year. It's the you have to be here. It's uh, as simple as that. And customers from every single industry are here too. That you don't get a lot of shows that have every single industry, in almost every single location around the globe. So it's uh, it's a must 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 be here. Well, and the personas. Evolved, right? I was at reInvent number two. That was yeah. my first, and it was all developers. Not all, but a lot of developers. And today, it's a business mix. That's really right. is. Totally is Big a business time. mix. And I just I talked about it a little bit on the show, but the diversity on the show floor. It's the first time I've had to wait in line for the ladies' room at a tech conference yeah, yeah. in uh -huh. almost a two-decade career That's of doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and it was really refreshing. I was so impressed. So clearly. There's a commitment to community, but also a commitment to diversity, yeah. and, and it's brilliant to see on the show floor. This is a partnership that is robust and has been around for a little while. Manu, why don't you tell us a little bit about the partnership here? Yes, so Red Hat and AWS are uh, best friends, you know, forever together. <laughs> oh, right. no wonder we got the That's fist right. bumps and all That's the good right. vibes right. coming out. I know, it's great, I uh, love that. We have a, a decade <laughs> of uh, working together. Uh, I think the relationship in the first phase was around running RHEL bundled with EC2. Sure. We have about 70,000 customers that are running RHEL, which are running mission critical workloads such as SAP, Oracle databases, bespoke applications, across a set of verticals. Now, as more and more enterprise customers are finally you know, endorsing and adopting public cloud, I think that business is just going to continue to grow. So a lot of uh, progress there. The second iteration has been around you know, developers telling Red Hat and AWS, hey listen, we want to, uh, it's getting competitive, we want to deliver new features faster, quicker, we want scale and we want resilience. So just the entire push towards DevOps containers. So that's the second chapter with you know, Red Hat OpenShift on AWS, which launched as a, a joint managed service in 2021, last year. And I think the third phase, which we're super excited about, is just bringing the ease of consumption, one-click deployment, and then having our customers you know, benefit from the joint committed spend programs together. So you know, making sure that RHEL and Ansible and JBoss, the entire portfolio of Red Hat products are available on AWS Marketplace. So that's the one, two, three iteration of our relationship. It's a decade of working together, and you know, best friends are super committed to making sure our customers and partners continue to be successful. Yep. Yeah, that, he said it. He said it perfectly. Right, yeah. 2008. I know you don't like that, but we started with RHEL on demand just in 2008 before EC2 even had a console. So. The partnership has been there, like Manu says, for a long time. We got the partnership, we got the products up there now, and we just got to finalize that go to market and get that uh, gas on the fire. Yeah, so Graviton, Outpost, Local Zones, you're leaning into all the new stuff. Right, so that portends, I mean, 2008, we're talking two years after the launch of S3. That's right. Right, so, and now look. Right, yeah, so, yeah. is this a harbinger of things to come with these new innovations. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, the innovation is a key tenet of our partnership, our relationship. Mm -hmm. So if you look at from a product standpoint, uh, Red Hat or RHEL was one of the first platforms that made uh, support for Graviton, which is basically 40% better price performance than any other uh, distribution. Then that translated into making sure that RHEL is available on all of our regions globally. So this year we launched Switzerland, Spain, uh, India, and Red Hat was available on launch there. Support for Nitro, support for Outposts, Rosa yeah. support on Outposts as well. 
So I think that relationship, that uh, innovation on the product side, uh, that's pretty visible. I think that innovation again then translates into what we're doing on marketplace with one-click deployments we spoke about. Yeah. I think a third aspect of the inno innovation is around making sure that we are making our partners and our customers successful. So one of the things that we've done so far is Joe leads a, you know, a black belt team that really goes into each customer opportunity making sure how can we help you be successful. We launched, and you know, we should be able to share that uh, on a link after this. We launched like a big playlist which talks about every single use case on how do you get successful and running OpenShift on AWS. So that innovation on behalf of our customers, partners to make them successful, that's been a key tenet for us together as well. That's right, and that team that uh, Manu was talking about, we're going to 10X that team this year going into January. Our fiscal year starts in January. Love so, that. Yeah, we're going to have a lot no of No hiring freeze over here. Yeah. No, no ma'am, no, yeah. that's right. Yeah. And uh, you know what I love about working with AWS, and, and, and Manu just said it very, all of that's customer driven. Every single event that we, that he just talked about in that timeline, it's customer driven, right? Customers wanted rail on demand. Yeah. Customers want JBoss up in the cloud. Ansible this week. You know, everything's up there now, so it's just getting that go-to-market tight, and uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna get that done. So what's the algorithm for customer driven in terms of taking the input because if every customer saying, "Hey, I, I want this, I want ask that," a really I, you know, similar question. Right? Yeah, I, yep, I, totally that's what I want. Page. And if you know, ninety-five percent of the customers say it, hey, maybe that's a good idea. Should we I think we should do that. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. Trends. But <laughs> yeah. you know, thirty percent, you might be like, mm, you know, twenty percent. You know, how do you guys decide when to put gas on the fire? No, that I think, uh, as I mentioned, there are about seventy thousand large customers that are running rail on EC2. Many of these customers are informing our product uh, strategy. So we have uh, you know, close to about a couple of thousand power users. We have uh, customer advisory boards. And these are the uh, you know, customers that are informing us, hey, let's get all of the yeah. Red Hat portfolio and marketplace, support for Graviton, support for Outpost. Why, don't we, are, why are we not able to dip into the consumption, uh, committed spend programs from both Red Hat and AWS? That's right. So it's these power users, both at the developer level as well as the guys who are actually doing large uh, commercial consumption, they are the ones who are informing the roadmap for both Red Hat and AWS. But That's do you right. codify the, the feedback? Yeah, I'm like, I want to see who, the data data. Who, who the said, I think it was, yeah. I don't know, it was maybe Jassy, maybe it was Bezos, that, that data beats intuition. So do you take that information and somehow, I mean it's global, 70,000 customers, yeah. right? And they have different weights, different spending patterns, different levels of maturity. Yeah. Do you, how do you codify that and then ultimately make the decision? Yeah. I, if I mean, well, you, yeah. you've got the strategic advisory boards, which are made up of customers and partners, and you know you get you get a good you got to get a good slice of your customer base to get in, and you got to take their feedback and you got to do something with it, right? That's the that's the way we do it and codify it at the product level. I'm sure open source is that's that's basically how we work at the product level, right? The most elegant solution in open source wins, and that's that's pretty much how we do that at the. I, I would just level. add. I think it's also. Just the implicit trust that the two companies had built with each other, working in the trenches, making our customers and partners yeah. successful over the last decade. And I'll give an example. So that manifests itself in context of like, you know, Amazon and Red Hat just published the entire roadmap for OpenShift, what are the new features that are becoming over the next six to nine to 12 months. It's open source, available on GitHub. Customers can see, and then they can basically come back and give feedback like, hey, you know, we want HIPAA compliance, we just launched. That was a big request that was coming from our healthcare customers. That is not any uh, You know, support either. for Graviton or NVIDIA instances. So I, I, I think it's a, it's a... Here's the thing, the reason I'm pounding on this is because you guys have a pretty high hit rate. And I think yeah, it's, as a customer... Mildly successful as company. A, as, yeah, yeah. A, as a customer advocate, the better, you know, the, if, if you guys make bets that pay off, it's going to pay off for customers, not right? Enough. And because there's a lot of failures in IT. Yeah, I mean, let's face right. it. So and I think, I think you said the key word, bets. You, Place a lot of small bets. Do you have the, the innovation engine to do that? AWS is the perfect place to place those small bets and then you, you know, pour gas on the fire when, when they take off. Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, it's not expensive to that's experiment. Right. Yeah, right? especially in the managed service world, right? Oh, and I know you love taking things to market and you're a go-to-market guy. Let's talk GTM. What's got you yeah. so pumped about GTM for 2023? Uh, we, we are going to, you know, 10X the teams that are going to be focused on these products, right? So we're going to, oh. Also come out with a hybrid committed spend program for our customers that meet them where they want to go. So they're coming out of the data center, going into a cloud, we're going to have a nice financial model for them to do that. Uh, and that's going to take a lot of the friction out. 
Yeah, I mean, I mean you've, you've nailed it. I, I think the, the fact that now entire Red Hat portfolio is available uh, on Marketplace, you can do it on one click deployment. It's deeply integrated with Amazon services. And the most important part yeah. that Joel was making, now customers can double dip. They can uh, drive benefit from the consumption uh, committed spend programs, both from Red Hat and from AWS, which is amazing, which is a game changer That's for right. many of our large customers. That's right, and that, so we're going we're gonna to really go to town on that next year. That's, uh, and all the, all the resources that I have, which are the technology sellers and the SAs, and the, you know, the engineers, we're growing this team the most out of that team. So it's so uh, when global. you say 10x, how many are you at now? I'm curious uh, to see where you're at. I can't tell you. Okay, oh, but there's not one. Number, right. Oh no, there's not one. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's uh, triple digit. Yeah. Yeah, right yeah. Now, today. Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Awesome. So and it's a very sizable team. Yeah. They're actually making sure that each of our customers are successful, and then really making sure that you know, uh, no customer <laughs> left behind policy. And, and, and it's a great point. That customers love when Amazonians and Red Hat show up. They love it, and it's. Uh, they want to get more of it, and we're gonna we're gonna give it to them. Yeah. Must feel great to be loved like that. Oh uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Seems like it's safe to say that there's another decade of partnership between your two companies. I hope yeah. so. I that's mean, right. That's the plan. Yeah, and I would say also, you know, just the IBM coming into the mix here. Yeah. I, I you know, Red Hat has informed the way we have turned around our partnership with IBM. Essentially, we we signed a strategic collaboration agreement with the company. Yeah. All of IBM software now runs on Rosa. So that is now also providing a lot of tailwinds, both to our REL customers, Ansible, as well as Rosa customers. Uh, and I think it's a very net creative, very positive for our partnership. That's right, it's been very positive, yep. Yeah, you, you see it in the billboards. Yeah. yeah. Right? Also that, <laughs> right. great, great yeah. point, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. We, have a, we have a new challenge, a new tradition on theCUBE here at reInvent, where we're, well, it's actually kind of a glamour moment for you, depending on how you leverage it. We're looking for your 30 second hot take, your Instagram reel, your sizzle, Thought leadership, biggest takeaway, most important theme from this year's show. I know you want to. Uh, oh, all right, Joel. I mean, you're uh, a TM boy. I feel like you can spit. Rosa. Yeah. It is all about Rosa yeah. for us. It is uh, all in on that. That's the native OpenShift offering on AWS, and that's that's the soundbite we're going go to town with. Now, I don't want to forget all the other products that are in there, but Rosa is uh, is a very key push for us this year. Yeah. Fantastic. All right, Manu. Uh, I think our customers, it's getting super competitive. <laughs> our customers want to innovate. Just a little bit. The <laughs> enterprise customers see the cloud native companies. I want to do what these guys are doing. I want to develop features at a fast clip. I want to scale, I want to be resilient. And I think that's really the spirit that's coming out. So to Joel's point, you know, move towards containers, serverless, DevOps, which was like, you know, aha, something that's happening on the side of an enterprise is now becoming mainstream. The business right. is demanding it, the IT is becoming the centerpiece in the business strategy. So that's been really like the aha big thing that's happening here. Yeah. And those architectures are coming together, aren't they? That's correct. Right, you know, VMs and containers, it used to be one architecture, and then at the other end of the spectrum is serverless, people thought of those as different things. And now it's a single architecture, and, and it's kind of right approach for the right job. And, and, right? and a compliment here to Red Hat, they do an incredible job of hiding that complexity. Yeah, yes. And making sure that, you know, for example, just make it easier for the developers to create value, and then, uh, and you know, yeah. That's right, Those, they were previously siloed architectures. And, That's right, and, OpenShift, and we want to be the that. place yeah. where you want to run containers or uh, virtual machines. We want that to be the yeah. single place, not, not go bolt on another piece of architecture to just do one or the other. Yeah, and hey, the hybrid cloud vision is working for IBM, no That's question, right. you know, it's, and it's achievable. Yeah. I mean, I just, I've said, unlike you know, some of the previous you know, visions on fixing the world with AI, hybrid cloud is actually a real problem that you're attacking and it's showing in the results. Agreed. So, yeah. All right, All right last question for you guys, because it might be kind of fun. <laughs> 10 years from now, oh. we're at another, we're sitting here, we all look the same. Time has passed, but we are not aging, which is a part of the new technology that's come out in skincare. <laughs> that's my, <laughs> I'm just throwing that out there, why not? <laughs> uh, what do you guys hope you, that you can say about the partnership and, and your continued commitment to community? Oh, that's a good question. You go first this time. Yeah. I think, um, you, you know, the, you know, for looking into the future, you need to look into the past. Uh, and Amazon has always been driven by working back from our customers. That's like our key tenant, uh, principle number 101. A couple of people have said that on this stage this yeah, week, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think our partnership, I hope, 
over the next decade, continues to keep that tenet as a centerpiece. Uh, and then whatever comes out of that, I think we'll, we're going to be you know, working through that. Yeah, I, I would say this, I think you said that well. The customer innovation is going to lead us to wherever that is, and it's, it's, it's going to be in the cloud for sure. I think we can say that in 10 years. Um, but yeah, anything from, from AI to the quant, quantum computing that IBM's really pushing behind, uh, you know, those are, those are going to be things that hopefully we show up on a, on a partnership with Manu in 10 years. Yeah. Maybe sooner. Well, whatever happens next, we'll certainly be covering it here on theCUBE. Thank That's you right. both for being here. Joel Manu, fantastic interview. Great to see you guys. Yeah, Great to see you. brought Thank the you. energy. I think you're definitely ranking high on the top interviews. We, we for, love okay. that. For thank the day. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. All right. All right. Good not, job, guys. Not that you're competitive yeah. at all. And thank you all for tuning in to our live coverage here from AWS reInvent in Las Vegas, Nevada. With Dave Vellante, I'm Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for high-tech coverage. <laughs>